Hi, I'm Dr. Robin Cohen from the CAC USC School of Medicine in Los Angeles. I'm also the chair of the Workforce for Media Relations and Communication for the Society of Thoracic Surgeons. This is a recorded press briefing from research presented at the 57th annual meeting of the Society of Thoracic Surgeons. The presentation is entitled, The Effect of COVID-19 on Adult Cardiac Surgery in the United States, Analysis of the Society of Thoracic Surgeons Adult Cardiac Database. It will be presented by Dr. Tom Wynn from the University of California, San Francisco, and discussed by Dr. Vivek Rao from the University of Toronto in Ontario, Canada. My name is Tom Wynn. I'm a cardiothoracic surgeon at the University of California in San Francisco. I will be presenting on behalf of the co-authors looking at the effect of COVID on adult cardiac surgery in the United States using the SS National Database. This study represents the largest description of the impact of COVID on adult cardiac surgery volumes and outcomes in the United States using the SS National Database. This data set involves more than 717,000 patients and 20 million COVID data points and represents a true tour de force effort. The SCS is in the process of using this data to create online resources so others can see how they were affected by COVID. COVID-19 has changed the world as we know it. At the time of this presentation, there have been over 92 million global cases of COVID with nearly 2 million global deaths. The United States accounts for more than 23 million cases and over 384,000 deaths. Previous reports have confirmed dramatic rates of morbidity and mortality for COVID positive patients. There exists minimal data, however, regarding the effect of COVID on adult cardiac surgery volume and outcomes in the United States. The goal of the study were to examine the volume trends for adult cardiac surgery cases during COVID-19 pandemic, examine the effect of COVID-19 surge on mortality outcomes, and lastly, provide a regional COVID-19 hotspot subgroup analysis. The SCS Adult Cardiac Surgery Database was queried from January 1st, 2018 to June 30th, 2020, yielding over 717,000 patients. Surgical volume and ODE trends were analyzed. Data from the Johns Hopkins COVID-19 database were queried from February 2020 to January 2021, yielding over 20 million patients. This figure shows cardiac surgery volume for the entire United States. From 2018 until December 2019, there were on average 24,000 cases per month. In April 2020, the average number of cases dropped to 12,000 cases per month, representing nearly a 53% reduction in overall case volume in the United States. By July 2020, there was a sharp increase in near baseline. We then looked at elective and non-elective non case volume during this time period. In April 2020, we see an approximately 65% reduction in elective cases and approximately 40% reduction in non-elective cases in the United States. We then overlaid on this figure COVID cases in the United States with the blue line to understand the role and timing of COVID on changes in case volume. We see that the nadir of case volume coincides perfectly with the peak of the first COVID storm. For the purpose of this presentation in the manuscript, we do not have cardiac surgery volume after June 2020, but as you can see from the figure, there is a gradual increase in COVID cases in the United States. This next figure also shows regional COVID volume trends. As you can see, the Mid-Atlantic and New England were hit with COVID the earliest and had the highest number of COVID cases during the study time period, and the Mountain Pacific had the lowest number of COVID cases. We then want to see how COVID cases affected cardiac surgery volume. This figure shows cardiac surgery volume by U.S. regions. As you can see, the Mid-Atlantic and New England had the highest number of COVID cases and also the largest drop in cardiac surgery volume. New England had a 63% reduction and the Mid-Atlantic had a 71% reduction in cardiac volume. With the Mid-Atlantic being a hotspot region, we did a subgroup analysis focused on the Mid-Atlantic region. As you can see here, the Mid-Atlantic had a 71% reduction in overall uh, case volume. We again stratified by elective versus non-elective cases. There was a 75% reduction in elective cases and approximately 59% reduction in non-elective cases in the Mid-Atlantic region. We also overlaid COVID cases in the Mid-Atlantic region in blue, and we see an inverse relationship between cardiac volume and the number of COVID cases. Lastly, we looked at cardiac surgery outcomes during the COVID surge with a focus on hotspot regions defined as the Mid-Atlantic and New England uh, versus all other regions. 
we wanted to see if, if we were operating on higher risk patients. So we looked at the O to E ratio for mortality. The pink line represents cardiac surgery volume. The blue line represents O to E ratio for all index operations. Prior to the surge, the Mid-Atlantic and the New England regions had excellent outcomes with an O to E less than one. During the COVID surge, there was a nearly 75% increase in the ODE for mortality. This effect was less pronounced for all regions. Because cabbage is the most common operation we do, we conducted the same analysis for isolated cabbages. In the Mid-Atlantic and New England regions, there was a nearly 148% increase in the ODE ratio for mortality. Several discussion points are noteworthy. During the first COVID-19 surge, there was a greater than 50% reduction of all cardiac surgery volume in the United States, with the Mid-Atlantic and New England re region impacted the most with a 65 to 70% reduction. The COVID-19 surge was associated with a 75% increase in mortality ODE for all cases in regions most affected by COVID and 148% increase in the ODE for isolated cabbages. In conclusion, this study represents a largest description of the impact of COVID on adult cardiac surgery volume outcomes in the United States. During the COVID-19 pandemic, cardiac surgery volume suffered dramatically, particularly in New, Eng New England and the Mid-Atlantic regions with a significant increase in the expected mortality. Our research has few limitations, namely the lack of available data regarding individual patient COVID-19 infection status. And then we are temporarily focused on the first COVID-19 surge. Last year, our study did not explore the economic impact of COVID on CT surgery. Thank you for your time and attention. Greetings, STS 2021, and hello from Toronto, Canada. My name is Viv Rao. I'm the Chief of Cardiac Surgery at the Peter Monk Cardiac Centre with the Toronto General Hospital. I'd like to thank Tom and the organizers for providing me with his slides and a summary of his presentation that you just heard. Clearly, COVID-19 has had a dramatic impact on all of our lives. What's less well known, however, is the collateral damage inflicted by the virus and the diseases that it causes. Studies such as those just presented by Dr. Nguyen help to shed light on that collateral damage. Using the STS database, they tracked the volume of surgery during the first wave of the pandemic. What they observed nationwide was a dramatic reduction in cardiac surgical services. Although more obvious in the areas of hotspots where the activity of the virus was higher, the trend was seen in all geographic regions of the country. Not surprisingly, there was a shift in the demographics of the patients who received surgery with less elective surgery performed and more urgent and emergent surgery. What was unfortunately disappointing was that the observed to expected mortality for those patients who had surgery also rose during the first wave of the pandemic for unclear reasons as of yet. We performed a similar analysis in our geographic region of Ontario, Canada, and we examined volumes pre, during, and post the first wave of our pandemic, which occurred in April and May of 2020. Similar to what we just saw from Dr. Nguyen, we saw a dramatic reduction in cardiac surgical services during the height of the pandemic. While we all expected a flood of patients to return as we returned to normal activity in the fall of 2020, this did not occur. In fact, right through to November 2020, we never quite achieved our pre-pandemic volumes, which begs the question, what happened to those hundreds, if not thousands of patients that didn't seek cardiac surgery during the height of the first wave of the pandemic? The sad fact is many of those simply died while devoiding hospital care for their cardiac disease. It is important for studies of these to highlight the fact that cardiac disease remains an important killer of men and women in North America and should not be obfuscated by the pandemic that we're currently in. I want to thank Dr. Nguyen and his colleagues for highlighting the fact that COVID-19 has had a dramatic impact in the provision of cardiac surgical services throughout both of our countries. I'm appreciative of the privilege to discuss this important paper.